Hi everybody, welcome back to OrthoNugs. Let's talk about the osteoarthrokinematics of the lumbar spine. So if you look at the facet orientation, the facet orientation is, for the most part, there are some transition zones when you're transitioning from thoracic to lumbar and lumbar into the sacrum. But in general, the facet joints are vertically aligned in the sagittal plane. So uh, when I talk to students, we go cervical, thoracic, and then lumbar is here. So my palm will be the articular surface side. Osteokinematically, the motions that occur in the lumbar spine are gonna be primarily flexion and extension, and that should make sense based on the facet orientation. Uh, published norms are typically about 60 degrees of lumbar flexion, about 25 degrees of lumbar extension. We also have side bending that occurs. Uh, norms are about 25, 30 degrees of side bending. And then we also have rotation, but there's minimal rotation, five to 10 degrees. And again, that's related to the facet orientation. It doesn't allow much rotation. So the glides that occur at these uh, facet joints in the lumbar spine, as we go into flexion, we're gonna describe that as a superior translational glide. Extension is an inferior translational glide. Now, if we look at side bending, so let's side bend to the left. So uh, let's just pick uh, two, three here, or the articulation between the inferior articular facet on L2 and the superior articular facet on L3. So when we side bend to the left, for example, you're gonna get a, an inferior translational glide on the ipsilateral side and a superior translational glide on the contralateral side. So you can see that there, hopefully. And then with rotation, again, not a ton of rotation that occurs in the lumbar spine. If it's five to 10 degrees total motion or total rotation, L1 to um, L5 on S1, then each individual segment is only gonna contribute a degree or two to rotation. So let's say we rotate to the left. Hopefully you can picture that. Let's rotate to the left. We're gonna get distraction of the articular surfaces right here on the ipsilateral side. And we're gonna get compression of the articular surfaces on the contralateral side.